uh, publish open source files. So, so uh, these, these were rela uh, realities in 50s and 60s. And the initial decline of open source actually started in the 60s uh, when, uh, um, when compilers uh, production, actually production cost uh, increased to, to cost of the hardware. Um, and uh, if we are moving to like 70s, uh, at and uh, was actually um, developed a very popular uh, Unix operating system, which uh, which uh, which was of no cost for the government and universities and academia, um, uh, but these actually these versions of Unix uh, didn't come with the permission to redistribute um, or to redistribute modified ver versions to, to to other entities. Let's say, so in 80s, at and actually stopped free. Um, uh, free distribution and started to charge for for patches of of the U Unix operating system, and most of the researchers had to pay commercial licenses uh, because there were, at the time there was no real alternative. And basically, um, there was one guy called Richard Stallman actually distressed uh, by this situation, and they actually founded a uh, GNU project and established Free Software Foundation um, and invented basically this license that this well-known uh, GNU GPL. In parallel, um, like in 90s, uh, the Microsoft, uh, uh, in 70s, actually Microsoft was established um, and actually we briefly discussed this in the last presentation, but Microsoft was very, you know, um, was was very um, bad on on open source. And even I I have found this uh, uh, the saying from one of the um, owners of Microsoft, Steve Ballmer, who who mentioned that Linux in 2001. They, he mentioned that Linux is a cancer that uh, attaches itself in intellectual proprietary is sense to everything it touches. So basically, um, it, like in, in, in the, in, the uh, in 2000 or, or, or even earlier, uh, the, there was, you know, a lot of declines. There, there were plenty of commercial projects there and nobody liked open source at all. But recently, like a couple of years ago, everything changed dramatically, right? So basically what you can see here is Microsoft uh, has like 4,000 engineers that are developing uh, 3,000 repositories of open source projects. So re in recent years, there was a huge shift, um, uh, you know, um, huge shift, um, in uh, perception of open source, right now, um, you know, there's the, the, the uh, uh, people like to think that we are charging not for the code, but for the services that are, are attached to that code. So you may find out that there are plenty of cloud solutions out there, like AWS or even Microsoft Azure. They, they are charging it for the resources, for the hardware resources and so on. But basically uh, the software that runs on these clouds, um, uh, in, 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 in these clouds are basically mostly based on open source. So um, as an icebreaker, I have uh, placed here a nice uh, photo uh, of the application. You can find it out in your Linux distribution, for instance. It's called Xbill. Uh, I think this application was created somewhere in the 90s, where uh, where you actually you can take a flavor how how um, mm, how it uh, how open source how Microsoft didn't like open source and open source didn't like Microsoft. 
basically this game is about um, about uh, you, you can see here the computers and basically X Bill it's from uh, from the name of the owner of Microsoft it's Bill Gates right and actually Bill is going to each and every machine and puts there its um, its operating system the Windows and your job is to stop him so this is like a nice example um, of uh, of how um, uh, how the how, how it looks like in the past, but right now everything has changed. So I think this is all for that part. So I give a uh, voice. No, this is not all. Um, uh, let's go um, and discuss why open source is important. So. Actually, I, will, I, I love to say that open source is the only software model that boosts the innovation, right? Uh, it actually enables you to not reinvent the wheel every time you start a new project. I mean, this is true because you can, uh, if you are looking, if you, if you want to do something, usually you want to take uh, something that is already done and try to reuse it and extend it to, uh, to, to, to your needs, right? So you'll not reinvent the wheel and, uh, you know, create all of the libraries that, that, that you need. You can focus um, always on something, um, on something new, um, on something that distinguishes your projects from, from the other. And, um, this is my personal experience. When I was at university, uh, Microsoft was the first company that sell their technology for free. Actually, they came to the university and say, okay, take, uh, take my, this license for free and start to learn, right? But uh, I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to recall any technology from Microsoft that I learned during studies and I'm using right now. It's already outdated, right? It's not present. So whatever you learned 15 years ago, it, you, you cannot reuse it right now, right? So the open source projects are different in that manner because um, actually uh, they can survive pretty long time even without external funding. And uh, we have um, actually presenting here uh, some examples. So obviously Linux is one of such a projects. It's, it was created very long time ago. I think we have even found out that GMP, the, um, um, the application that you can paint your drawings was, was created like 24 years ago, right? And, and basically, as you can see, these technologies, this, uh, these applications survived. But for instance, uh, Microsoft technologies, some of the Microsoft technologies didn't survive for, for a such a long period of time. So this is, actually, uh, this is actually why everybody thinks that open source is something that you can learn and leverage somewhere else. If you learn um, the technology that is proprietary, um, you can you will use it for some period of time, but then you will not be able to use it anywhere because because it will be outdated very soon. So I guess this is all for that part, and I'm uh, giving the voice towards Eduard Eduardo. Yes. All right. So I have control now. Okay. Uh, right. I'll give the remote control to you, Eduardo. All right. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Sure. At Martin did it. Okay, let me just click on the next slide. Okay, so let's talk about Git now. All right, so, okay, let me just click. Oh, okay. oh so let me try to get the next slide. How do I do this? I think I'm supposed to click. Uh, pardon me, it's just getting so no used problem. to this. No problem. Okay, let me get to the next slide. Okay, there you go. So let's talk about Git and its history. So Git basically is a version control system that is used for software development. 
Now, this is specifically used to detect any change in the source code now. This is terminal based. So, this is mostly for, this is not like other software. So, it was created in 2005 by Linux creator Linus Torvalds, and it was, he was using it as a means to develop the Linux kernel. Now, this is according to Linus himself. He basically came up with the name Git because to him it was the stupid contact tracker. Now, that's not completely true because he also called it, he also, because in a good day, Git could be the genius ideas tracker. And on a bad day, it would be known as the, well, I don't want to mention the name here, and then idiot tracker. So Linus is known for his comedy pretty much. So it, it's Git can help in, in either way. So anyways, it's a free and open source and it is distributed under the new general public license version two, which we will talk about later in the later, in the later part. Move on to the next slide. Okay. Okay, where is the button? I'm trying to click. Okay, now let's talk about the basic git commands. Now there are two other commands that I should have put here, but uh, Deepak will mention those later. Uh, those would be git push and git pull. So let's talk about these commands. The first one is called clone. And this one is to, of course, in its name, clone an online repository to a directory. Uh, let me give you an example. For example, when I was installing OpenCV on my Ubuntu machine, I simply typed git clone and then the website where I could find OpenCV. And then it sent me the links, well, all the files needed to download OpenCV. Then else, so, this, you'll be using this if you want to download certain files. Commit is to record changes to the repository. So if you made changes to the repository, you would just type git commit. And then git merge simply means to join two or more development histories together. So if you're merging, so if you have certain development histories and you want to merge them together, so you just use the merge command. And then add is to add files to the index list, an in index branch list, or you could also list or create create or delete branches. Then git log simply shows the history of your commit logs, and git diff is, is simply just showing the differences between your commits. This can be very helpful if you are trying to to make certain changes to your code. Now I should note. If, uh, if you're using Linux, Git's already installed. Well, it's on most distros. Some distros will require you to install it. On Windows, you can use Git for Windows. Uh, you'll have to use it if you want to run Git. And on Mac, you run the Git for Mac. You, you download the Git for Mac program. Let me get to the next slide. Ooh, worked the first time. And then we have the git ignore file that is used to tell the git software which files it should ignore while making it push the repository. This simply means that if you have certain files you don't want to push, you simply say, well, I want these files. Th these files, for example, let's say you have some files that, that you want to ignore, such as, I guess, licensing files or uh, Matic, uh, Martin, would you like to explain more about uh, GitIgnore? Martin? Hmm, seems Matic. Okay, uh, Gardu, you can see in the Git Ignore repository. Ah, right? yes, I can see. Okay, yes, so I... I'll talk about the Git Ignore files. So here sure. are a lot of Git Ignore files. Git Ignore file is just a hidden file because it is starting. Sorry for the background noise. Uh, it is a hidden file because it is starting with dot. 
so every file that would be starting with dot will be hidden until you make it not hidden whatever that means so you will figure it out so let's see uh, if i want to create a c++ code base or uh, on github i can just copy this git ignore file or i may already know what are what type of files i may build build uh, create during the build like during making using make command using make files so with the straight gcc then main dot c file you all you always create dot o or dot out files so here it means any file with any name that ends with dot o extension don't include it uh, in the code base when i'm giving a push okay marek has uh, raised hand so marek do you want to say something okay so i think it is clear to you all uh, also i have muted everybody so if you are trying to say something please keep your questions to yourself until we cover all the parts for like topics for part 1 okay so sorry marek okay well, i think that's pretty much it for my part marek i have unmuted you oh Uh, is, uh, sorry, you you should also unmute uh, Martin because when when you mute everyone, uh, we have, can mute ourselves okay, for a I moment. Have, so uh, okay, I have uh, unmuted Mar Martin and Edgardo. I also unmuted you because uh, I wanted to. Yes, yes, but, but I, if you sorry, mute, but... Uh, but if you mute yourself, uh, you can cannot unmute uh, it again. So so uh, it's impossible. for marching to unmute himself right now so you have to yeah. do it uh, manually again yeah pretty much but uh, when it comes to git ignore files uh, the most common example are for example in python there are um, compiled python uh, files you don't want to push them uh, add them to your repository there are also uh, database files or any files which contain uh, a bit more um, dangerous information which you don't want to share with uh, others but you want to keep it uh, in your uh, repository directory so it, it, something like this so you could also use the git ignore actually if you have your favorite let's say code editor which stores your settings somewhere in the project you, you can uh, you can uh, actually make to not store these files into your repository and this is ex especially important when for for instance you're working on some let's say services where you have keys uh to these services but of course you want you don't want to share it obviously with with the others um in in, in the world so you would like to keep it uh secret or on your local machine so then you could use this uh, ignore git to actually know those files as well the same when you um, some of you probably tried android development or any mobile development for example android studio has huge config files for the editor and is by default uh, adds git ignore file which uh, excludes all uh, configuration files from it so so there is also that the build files uh, the binary files yes you, sh sure. you should also not store in the git repository mm -hmm. okay shall we continue yeah. yes let's get it Uh, okay uh, now uh, do i have uh, remote control yeah, yes okay yes. okay good uh, now we are going to talk about uh, github which is uh, as you can read the uh, graphical version uh, uh, control software platform for open source project uh, it was uh, created in uh, 2008 uh, by guys working on uh, ruby on rails 
actually whole GitHub is created in Ruby, so there is that. Uh, and uh, it allows uh, different developers to share their code as well as edit their code. Probably most people know GitHub before even knowing what uh, Git is because it's so uh, popular, even people who just uh, want to try some uh, free uh, or open source projects uh, just uh, go to GitHub and uh, find it there. But it's uh, also an important tool for any uh, developer out there. Next. I have problems to jump into the network. Okay, wait, wait. No, I'll do it. Okay. Okay. Uh, actually, what Martin said earlier, do you know who owns GitHub right now? It's Microsoft. Uh, it was uh, acquired uh, last year or actually uh, in uh, December? 2000. 2018. 18, right, at the end of the 2018. And it turns out that Microsoft is uh, actually doing a lot of good for the GitHub. For example, uh, next slide. Okay. For example, uh, it wasn't possible previously to have uh, free, unlimited free uh, private repositories on GitHub. Any code you wanted to uh, put on your GitHub and as a part of a free account uh, had to be pub public. Now you can create a unlimited number of private repositories which can be uh, used for your personal projects, uh, etc. And uh, other thing is uh, when you are a student, you could uh, get a, uh, a pro account for free, which allows you to gain a lot of cool things from uh, GitHub, which uh, probably contains uh, uh, three named domains. Yeah, Deepak, you told yeah, something, yeah. right? Three named domains uh, and some other things. Uh, and uh, but still, people remember, uh, actually some people remember uh, what uh, my Microsoft was doing uh, during the early 2000s and 90s. So uh, some people didn't like uh, the idea that uh, GitHub uh, will be owned by Microsoft. Uh, as such, they, uh, they moved to other popular alternatives, for example, Bitbucket and GitLab. Actually, there is also Source SourceForge, but uh, they had an uh, incident with um, adding uh, something to the code you download, which uh, actually total, totally defeats the idea of uh, open source. And uh, well, they lost their credibility. They, they are not so popular right now because of that. Uh, for example, in Bit, uh, Bitback and also in GitLab probably, uh, you have uh, un also unlimited uh, private repositories, but uh, in GitHub you cannot work uh, with others on your free private uh, repositories. It's possible in Bitbucket because you can create a group of three to five uh, contributors who work on private repositories. So if you want if you need uh, alternative uh, or have a small group uh, of people who want to work on private repository, you don't have to use uh, uh, organization uh, account of uh, on GitHub, right? Sure. Next. Well, well, we uh, sorry, we. S we said that uh, Microsoft is uh, now uh, ultra pro open source. And as you can see, the first uh, two uh, projects with uh, the most number of contributors are actually from 
Microsoft. Well, uh, this VS Code, right? It's great uh, tool, and uh, Azure Docs also. Uh, they thought about the idea of sponsoring projects and then uh, let people to work them uh, uh, work on them for free, but they can also use it for free. Uh, well, it was it was such a good idea that others tried it. Uh, you can also read more interesting things about on this page of the verse. But for example, uh, you could see that there was a React native. So uh, if you are full, if you are front end developer uh, or anything, you know that Re React is uh, also sponsored by Facebook and put on uh, GitHub. There's TensorFlow, which is sponsored by uh, Google. And there are a lot, lot of uh, sponsored projects. Uh, you could check each one on uh, on the Octoverse or um, just directly on GitHub. Okay. Now, uh, uh, so the this session will be over uh, at ten ten. So at p ten ten p.m. IST. Uh, only three minutes left, so I am going to unmute everybody so you can ask your questions. We'll start the next session with this one. Please follow the second part link. Uh, you guys have any questions? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Wait for the noise. Too much, too much. Okay, please unmute yourself. Uh, only those people who want to ask anything, uh, you can unmute. Please mute yourself. Mute ourselves now. It's okay. So, if you want to ask any question, please unmute yourself and ask it here. We will try to answer it uh, as fast as we can. Um, so guys, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, I'm Muhammad Ali uh, from the Motivation Channel. Um, first of all, thank you so much for having this session. Um, thank you, Deepak, um, and thank you to everyone. Um, my question is that uh, um, I'm really glad to have have you here. Um, uh, my question is that uh, today I was trying to upload a new version of a uh, file that I previously uploaded on GitHub uh, with a direct drag and drop uh, option. Are you getting my point? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so the problem. Uh, uh, may I know your name? Uh, who are you? I just asked uh, in the comment section also. I mean, uh, there's there are two hosts. Uh, one is Deepak and the other one is. Okay, we are four. Marek, Marcin, Edgardo, and me, Deepakatri. Okay, uh, so uh, uh, the guy who was talking just right now was Edgardo, right? Yeah, Marek. Okay, Marek. Marek. Yes, yes, if you mean me, yes, I'm Marek. Yes, Marek. So, so Marek and Deepak especially. Uh, when I try to upload the next version with the same file name, I mean, in get using CLI version, uh, we just you we just have to make some changes in a file, and we have to push, and it automatically detects that it's a new version, and it mean and it uh, and it changes it, I mean, uh, into the new version with the same name of file. But uh, today I saw a, a a kind of weird behavior i mean when i tried to upload the new version with the same name of fire it uh, complete it, it make it, it made it uh, like a new file i mean for example uh, when you download a file it says like xyz.txt for example okay uh, when okay. you again same uh, when you again save that same file uh, it says like xyz bracket 1.txt means that this is uh, a file a with another name. Yes. Yeah, it is a copied, copied. file. Yes, I, I think it, uh, it's only happened when you used uh, the drag and drop, uh, right? 
yes yes today i just noticed that so i want to clarify that is there uh, any mean that i can use drag and drop method and i can upload new versions without uh, initializing new files like uh, I mean, for example, just today I have I have pushed a simple linear regression.